So I'm honored to welcome you on this balmy afternoon to the groundbreaking ceremony for the Centennial Campaign as we embark on a transformational renovation of Moret Stadium. Our journey to this milestone today began in summer of 2019 when we discovered we had, dis we had structural integrity issues with our bleachers. We could have just simply replaced them, but to the credit of Dr. Witt and the visionary leadership of our Board of Trustees, we recognize this once in a generation opportunity to renovate our iconic stadium. We set out to achieve a bold vision to position Moret Stadium as one of the top venues in Division II that would also contend with most FCS schools. These upgrades will reaffirm our commitment to providing our students a truly exceptional experience while elevating the standard of excellence that will inspire success for years to come. The response by our alumni and community has been tremendous and our LR family has truly stepped up to help us re realize our vision for this project. Before we get started, I'd like to express my appreciation to a number of people who have been instrumental in today ceremony. First and foremost, to everyone who supported this project uh, financially um, and just in championing this, this vision. Our Centennial Club donors we, who have made a transformational gift of 100,000. We have 24 uh, Centennial Club donors. And just so you know, there's more room at the end of the bench for anyone who wants to join. I want to recognize George Moretz and his family who made the very first gift to this project. Marilyn and John Moretz, who stepped up with a lead gift to name the athletic campus, and also Johnny for his leadership as one of the co-chairs of the stadium campaign committee. Rhett Durham, who is our other campaign co-chair who has been a tremendous champion for this project, as well as numerous other projects, including the naming of the baseball field just recently. Our campaign committee got many of these folks here today. I'll mention their names, Rick Beasley, Jamie Dickinson, Bob Fincher, uh, Hickory Mayer, Hank Guess, Rod Harkelrod, Hank McCrory, George Moretz, Steve Rich, and Ingrid Smith. I want to recognize State Senator Dean Proctor, who has been instrumental in helping us advance this project. Warren Wood, our Hickory City Manager, not sure if he made it. Um, our architect, Kurt Ludwick, with Macmillan, Pasden, Smith and our contractor, specifically Roger Young uh, and Matt Winters, who was a, unable to be here today. And finally, I want to recognize our incredible staff who've worked tirelessly on this project. Aaron Bessie in athletics, Andy Anderson in advancement, Liz Cox, John Gaston, Kat and Necro, also members of the advancement team, and finally, G Jeremy Shreve, who is our vice president for business and finance. Well, we have a short program in store for you this afternoon to mark this special occasion. But before we break out the shovels for the groundbreaking, after that, we will we'll enjoy a little bit more fellowship and a little bit more reception. But to kick off our ceremony, I'd like to invite President Fred Witt to share some remarks. Okie dokie. Good to see everybody. Golly, when I see the sun and the chill in the air and the band playing, and we thought we'd have 20 or 30 out here today, and I look around, it's it's time to pull out the tailgate and, and strap it up. I'm, I'm ready ready for the season. But uh, thank you, Kim. And, and on behalf of Lenoran University, I do want to welcome everyone to this event. It's a certainly important day in, in the life of our university, not only for athletics, not only for the university, but really for the entire Unifor area. Um, you know, the members of the Board of Trustees, several are here today. Uh, you'll be hearing from our uh, outstanding chair of the board, Madeline Dasso. And to have their unwavering support, uh, many who've contributed to this financially, uh, is uh, we're just very fortunate, our university, to have such a, a strong board. Also wanted to thank Carolyn and, and George Moretz. You know, we look out and know that the name of this stadium uh, for so many years will retain the Moretz name. That's very special to them, but it's also special to us as well. So thank you for all that you've done and how this will honor your family. Kim mentioned Marilyn and Johnny, and I can't imagine a, a more appropriate name for our entire athletic complex, what they have done for this university. Uh, even before I came and since I've been here has been phenomenal. And I just want to publicly thank them for all they've done. Rhett Durham for your work in co-chairing with Johnny of the steering committee. Uh, certainly Roger Young, the president of 
Looper Construction. You know, we've had some good partnership with them. Our, our, our chapel on campus, uh, the Sports Performance Center, the University Commons, and now this football stadium is all, all a partnership that we've done with uh, uh, Roger and Matt. We look forward to this being uh, uh, a highlight of that, if you will. I also wanted to mention uh, uh, the Senator Dean Proctor from the 42nd District. You know, Senator Proctor was able to help us get some of the stimulus funding uh, toward this university and for this project. And uh, he's been a great supporter of, of this county as well as Alexander County. And thank you, Senator Proctor, for, for all your support. We also, you know, when you get a project like this, and while we've done well raising funds, you still have to have a little bit of help from your financial institutions for those bridge loans. And First Citizens Bank has stepped up. We're fortunate to be dealing with someone here locally. Mark Transu is here, the ma uh, manager of commercial and business banking. Kelly Farr, senior vice president. So I want to thank both of you for your help and, and support with this. As Kim mentioned, this is this is day's been in the works since 2019 when uh, when the, we realized that the stadium seating was, uh, we had some safety issues we had to address. And one issue would be just to kind of replace the seating. Another option was, well, let's build something new somewhere else. And we didn't want to do that. You know, this, this is a pretty iconic place in this community. Uh, not only have, has it been home to football games and, and more recently men and women's lacrosse, but people have come to uh, band concerts here. They've had commencement ceremonies here when they're in high school. There's been community youth sports. It's really an icon for this community. We see this stadium as, as our Wrigley Field or our Fenway Park, and we want to make it very, very special. And we've been playing football here for almost 100 years. We're the fourth oldest stadium in all of NCAA Division II. So what we want to do is be good stewards of the resources that have been stowed upon us and make sure we leave this. It'll be a, a super place to continue in, the, in playing football and men and women across for another 100 years. It'll be an outstanding venue that we'll all be uh, very, very proud of. Been playing football here, believe it or not, since 1924. So, you know, as, we, as, as this rises out of the ground, to me, so do the expectations for our programs. So we will meet the we will we will meet the sort of challenge to be as good as the facility is. And I think you're going to be really excited as this comes up out of the ground to see that this this could set us our path for a, a very unique future for Lenoran University athletics. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. We're very excited uh, to see this project happening. We had talked about it and. Well, let's do phase one, let's do this side, and you know, people that know me, if we're going to do it, we want to go 100%. So we're going to do the entire thing between now and before football season, right, uh, Looper? <laughs> Construction. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we, we plan to celebrate back here with a ribbon cutting before that first football game. So it's going to move fast and it's going to be efficient and it's going to be spe spectacular when it's all done. So thank you very much for it. Uh, again, I appreciate all your support and uh, being part of this LR family. As you know, recently the board decided to keep me on a little longer, so I'm going to be around for a few years to enjoy this. And uh, my work's not done yet, so we want to we want to continue to do great things for the university. Now I'd like to introduce our chair of the board of trustees, Madeline Dasso, to bring greetings as well. Thank you, Dr. Witt, and thank you so much. It's wonderful to see all the faces of the folks who are out here to help us to celebrate. I have to tell Kat that I do not like going behind Fred when I speak because he says all the things that I had ready to speak to say. So it leaves me with. Uh, a lot more to say, but I, I do want my remarks to be, be just very small, but I have to tell you that there is a magic about Lenore Rhine. There was a magic about it when I came to school here and graduated in 1975, and the magic is still here. I feel it every time I come on this campus. And this project that's going on behind us is an example of the magic, because not only is this a project where we have raised the largest amount of money for any single project in the history of Lenorine, $18 million. 
but we did it with a sense of community. There were people that gave $5, there were people that gave $50,000, there were people that gave a million dollars, but the important thing is, as we always do, we all did it together. So I'll be really thrilled to see it come up out of the ground, just like Dr. Witt. I thank you all for being here, and thank you all for being a part of it. Well, this time I'd like to invite a few of our campus and community uh, representatives to share a few uh, their remarks regarding this project. We're going to start off with George Moretz, uh, followed by John Moretz, Coach Mike Jacobs, and then to uh, finish us out is Cassie Leffler. She's a member of our women's lacrosse team. So at this time, I'd like to invite George Moretz. Wow, what a great day this is. And I want to know who arranged the weather for today <laughs> after last week. <laughs> this is a great day. It's great to see everybody here. Uh, this is a great day for the Norine. It's also a great day for the city of Hickory because Hickory uh, benefits so much from the Norine being here. And we've had a town gown relationship for many, many years. Uh, back when I was in high school, High school, Hickory High School, played all their football games here, and uh, it was it was used by the community as much. And I see this going forward as being a community project as well as the Norine. I think it'll be beneficial to everybody. So uh, my mom and dad uh, really supported the last uh, big uh, football uh, campaign. Uh, the stadium was named in their honor, and uh, I know they'd be pleased with where we are today. And uh, I want to thank you all for giving your support and help in seeing this become a reality. Okay. <laughs> well, it is great to see everybody here today, and uh, uh, I remember um, way back when I was playing with uh, Marvin and Roger and what. Bob Bundy and you know all the people out there no one could have ever imagined we'd be playing in a field like this I mean we didn't even have to tape the taper ankles it was how <laughs> tight the budget was and uh, but Moose product the Moose Sporty Goods really <laughs> uh, won on that one but uh, my co the co-director uh, campaign director with me Brett Durham you know I knew he was really smart but he he, he said the words uh, Dean Proctor <laughs> And uh, the rest is kind of history. What Dean and his position and what he was able to do with the state was a remarkable uh, accomplishment and, and so vital to this campaign. Um, I do thank everyone that's here and everybody that's contributed in any way. And uh, it, it's going to be amazing to have this facility for the Hickory area and for the community. As I remember, like George, I played we played Hickory High. From being a Red Devil, you know, we didn't like coming anywhere up here, but we, we played here. And it was a big event, and it would be packed out with eight or 10,000 people every night, so I think that'd be great uh, to bring back. Uh, so now I reckon I can introduce our head coach to come up and talk about the drive for the national championship and a few, uh, a few things like that. So welcome our head coach. What what an absolutely unbelievable turnout today for um, what is really something that is going to change uh, the course of our program. We feel we're already on a significant upward trajectory, but um, to put us in line with uh, really not to put us at the front of the line in Division II athletics and really ahead of many of our FCS competitors here uh, regionally that we compete for student athletes with. Um, it's just a tremendous testament to the amount of support and the community fellowship that is part of being a bear. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate to be here now for, for two years, and we all know in COVID years, it's like dog years, so I feel like I've been a part of the community for significantly longer, but we, we, are, we are extremely blessed. And you know, what I'd like to, I hope everybody understands is what this will do for um, not just our, our men's and women's lacrosse team, not just our football team, 
but for the community engagement uh, with A2A Day, for graduation ceremonies, um, you know, we, we have our, uh, our, our our Bears Choice Sports Awards were outdoors last year. I thought that went well. So there's a number of opportunities for for the community to be involved, and specifically to football, um, it puts us ahead of really everybody in the country from a facility standpoint between what we've done in the weight room in the last two years and what we're doing now uh, with Moret Stadium uh, it, it is something special and you know how it affects our kids it affects recruiting we have about 15 families on campus today so I may scoot out a little early here if you don't see me that's that's why I got to finish up a recruiting visit but you know we we are able to put something together athletically that matches what we're doing academically, that matches the community support, that matches the whole person benefit. And this stadium will help us not just recruit high school kids, but with the advent of the transfer portal, it'll help us re-recruit each year the fantastic students that are already invested in LR. And that's significant as we move forward. And uh, it's changed the landscape of what we deal with athletically. And again, to have the foresight to do this, Dr. Witt, Ms. Pate, and certainly all of those who have contributed um, at such a high level uh, speaks volumes to where we're going. We feel strongly about what we're doing. You know, our kids on and off the field are excelling. Another semester, we had 73 student athletes in football over a 3.0 this past semester. So, uh, you know, uh, our third playoff appearance in three years, we are moving forward and we're doing it with a young group of individuals that are going to continue to get even better. So, I'm blessed to lead this program. I'm blessed to be a part of the new century between the bricks, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we hold up our end of the responsibility. It'll allow us now, right, we hope to target some national games and really put us on the forefront of what's happening in Division II athletics, even more so than we already are. Thank you for all those who have supported. We look forward to seeing you. Uh, really, your first opportunity for the 2022 Bears will be the spring game, right? The Cardinal and Black game will be on August, or excuse me, April the 9th, uh, I believe at 1 p.m., so, so mark your calendars for that, and then we'll look forward to seeing you certainly September 3rd when this thing's ready to roll and all shined up. So thank you for allowing us to lead. Thank you for all your continued support. Go Bears. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Cassie Laffler, and I'm a graduate student on our women's lacrosse team. Um, I'm Ellie Campbell. I'm a sophomore on our women's lacrosse team. And we're just here today to show all of our appreciation to all of our new renovations that are coming to our athletic facilities this spring. Uh, this will totally impact our entire game day experience and from our football games to our own lacrosse games and being able to have a brand new locker space in the new field house is going to make this experience like so much more exciting for us and the new athletes coming up. Um, as I mentioned before, I just want to show everyone how appreciative we are as a team and as a student athlete uh, to be a part of something so exciting uh, that this project's happening on our campus and just want to express our sincere gratitude to everyone who's made this possible for us. Um, unlike Cassie, who is a graduate student, um, as a sophomore, I have I am very lucky and fortunate to be able to experience this stadium for what could be many more years. Um, and as a student athlete, um, it is a privilege to be proud of your home territory and your home turf and to have pride in where you play. And I can confidently say that right now, all athletes take pride in playing between the bricks, but seeing what this stadium has in store is, it's crazy. It's something we never thought possible. It's exciting, it's motivating as an athlete, as a student. Um, and we can't reiter reiterate enough how thankful we are for everyone who made this possible. So thank you again. And as always, go Bears. Probably one of the best parts of the ceremony is hearing our student athletes. We wish we could have heard from all sports and all of our wonderful coaches, um, but I think both Coach Jacobs and Cassie and Ellie, Ellie, did I get it right? Okay. I think they represented the heart of our coaches and our athletes. This time I'd like to invite our new pastor, Todd Cutter, to come up and really bless our ceremony today and bless this uh, wonderful facility for the next hundred years, all right? No pressure, <laughs> Pastor. Well, I was hoping somebody would yell, what time is it, so I could say it's prayer time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let us pray. I'm sorry I missed that. <laughs> uh, that's okay, that's all right. 
Most holy and gracious God, you promise to always do a new thing among us. And for that, we give you thanks. But today, we especially give you thanks for this new thing that we are doing, for this facility that will be built, that will be a blessing to athletes, to spectators, to all who come to our campus. We ask, O oh God, that you will bless the efforts that are undertaken here this day. We give you thanks for the vision and the dreams of those who have made it possible. We give you thanks that you have instilled the gift of generosity in many daughters. And we give you thanks for the board and for the administration and the staff at LR who have worked so hard to make this a possibility. Continue to watch over us, O oh God, and continue to open our eyes that we will not only see you in our midst each and every day, but that we will especially see you in our midst between the bricks. Amen. All right, it's time to dig. So I would like to invite all of those involved in the in the official um, groundbreaking ceremony. We have Dr. Witt, our board chair, Madeline. Uh, we've also got uh, Roger Young and uh, Kurt Ludwig, myself. Who am I missing, Kat? John and Rhett, that's right, our board, our, committee, our campaign committee chairs. Come on up here and grab a shovel and a hard hat and smile big. My suggestion is you raise it up. Get a little dirt, raise it up and look at the ground. How about that? <laughs>